Good morning everyone and welcome back to the shop. Uh, today I thought I'd give a quick video on how I built this rear indexing plate for my uh, tag lathe here and also how I had built this adjustable tool post. First thing I'll go over here is the little indexing head on the back. I had CNC cut this to a 60 hole pattern which is about as many holes as I could get for my 1 8 size I wanted. Um, but 60 holes seems to cover pretty much all the patterns I use. Um, I also CNC milled this so it would be tight on a little step in the pulley in the back here. Uh, that way everything would be concentric or I might have actually, thinking about it now, it was a while since I've done this, I might have cut the hole for the pulley the exact size as this one and that way it could align them. Yeah, that's what I did. And then I, I milled up a, or I turned a plug that would slide into this and this and align it all and then I could bolt it together. Um, and yeah, and that's it. All the holes, they're actually perfect. I milled this little block up on the tag with the milling attachment and just takes this, uh, <laughs> that's not gonna happen now. Um, <laughs> it takes that little brass pin and it slides through one of these holes and then it slides into this block or I slide it the other way, however I feel. Um, and it just, it locks the head up. And then I can do all my milling on this side um, with the, the head in the lock position. Before I throw you back on the tripod here, I gotta take a shot of this tripod. I picked this up at a second hand or an antique store for 20 bucks. And uh, it actually costs less than my cheapo plastic tripod that I use when I uh, want some you know, higher height uh, shots. Because this one, it extends out to four feet, but it's a little wiggly at that height. So um, I use it for on the bench here, shooting with the lathe, and same with the milling machine. But the amount of work that went into making this is phenomenal. Like, there's this little adjustment here for adjusting the angle. And it's all, this is a gear in here, and there's a lock, so you can adjust the angle perfectly. And this was all, all mangled. Uh, it was a really old uh, kind of a, a pad that, or a rubber that would grip the camera. So I picked it all out and then I report it. I report a urethane in here, and I had to mill a custom little holder for my camera that would hold in this round uh, slot with this little cam lock in here. But everything is tight and everything is brass or steel. Yeah, just beautiful little height adjustment <laughs> and like the little handle even pulls out and. Just a phenomenal amount of work, and it's a, a beautiful thing to hold. And I'm I'm impressed you can get something like this for 20 bucks. Uh, I just don't build stuff like this anymore. Anyways, back to the uh, milling machine stuff. Now this this is something I should have built right off the get go. Um, I didn't really know how I was going to go about milling it, but I figured out how to do it. And it, this is the best little um, upgrade I've made to this lathe. With this little cutout here, I'll take everything apart this little radius cutout and this little radius uh, block that goes in here, you can use these two top screws to adjust the angle at which the tool sits and that lets you adjust the height of the tool tip. So you can compensate for tool wear or anything weird, some bad sharpening you did or whatnot. Um, awesome little tool. I use it, uh, pretty much all my tools are roughly the same as in regards to center line height so I only have to really tweak, tweak it once. I got a couple tools that are a little bit of problems. Um, but once that, I just adjust one screw and everything stays in adjust. Um, perfect. Should have made this a long time ago. Awesome addition. The way I went about making this is I had to use... Let's get you a better shot here. One sec. Alright. The way I went about making this is I used the four jaw here. And I... Well, I'll actually put it in this way. And then I cheated this over uh, as far as this four jaw would take me. And then I milled out this on a radius and then without... Uh, changing it. Actually what you can do first is you can use the flat piece and I'll link to the little carver tool blog and it'll show you how um, how the steps to go about making it. I had to change mine because I didn't have the right tool but uh, anyway I'm rambling. You put a little piece of brass in there round one radius without changing anything you take the brass out and you cut this radius and then they're, they're exact matches. Um, I didn't have a, uh, a tool to get in here without hitting this part and this part while I was spinning it so what I ended up using was I have a fourth axis attachment uh, with a milling bit and I just milled it all out um, with a uh, rotary tooling or live tooling, whatever you want to call it. And then once that was done, I put a piece of brass in here and got real crafty with aligning this back and forth since I had moved this to get a perfect radius again. And it all worked out. It took me more steps, but uh, saved me from having to make another tool for it. 
And speaking of live tooling, you can see here, this is my little fourth axis attachment that I use. Uh, it's just a piece of CNC, half inch aluminum. I put a little set screw in the back and a brass collar that has the threads that match a uh, flex shaft for a Dremel. And then I can clamp this in my uh, milling attachment here and get it to attack the workpiece in whatever way I want. Um, and that's what I use for, for doing uh, fourth axis engraving or whatever I want to use it for. Uh, once again, super simple tool to make. Uh, you probably even, if you got a little uh, crafty with it and didn't have curves and stuff, you could probably just make it with the milling attachment on the tag. Um, awesome old tool. You can see this was my little knurling wheel, which or my knurling tool, which works awesome. You can see it in the video uh, that I did previously. And then just recently, I made this for the for the mill. It's a cutoff um, or a slitting saw, sorry, that I use on the tag, but I modified it so I can use it on the mill now. Just made a big arbor for it out of aluminum. And that's all the specialty tooling. Use a little fly cutter for the tag that I really have never used, but I made it and I like it. That's the fancy tools for the lathe. And here's a quick shot of the milling machine that I recently bought. It's a Craftex CX600, which is the same as a Grizzly uh, G0704, or whatever the acronym is there. It's the same as the BT60, I believe. They all have the same casting different color paint and a manual that's written slightly differently but every part is interchangeable uh, it's got the R8 spindle or the R8 collet for the spindle uh, this one's still gear drive but uh, it's an awesome little mill for the price I think I paid about 2200 Canadian for it with the stand and uh, yeah it's it's working great. We use it for a lot of projects already and it's nice to have a proper mill and it's also hard to get around in here because it's so small. So I apologize for the wiggly camera. Someday I might convert this to CNC. I thought I'd actually convert it really quickly but it's pretty handy having a manual mill that you can kind of just throw a part into and, and quickly do some work on. So might stay manual for a bit. Plus if I do it CNC, I think I'd want to do with ball screws and everything, so that adds a little bit of cost. And I haven't made a ton of tools with this machine yet, but one of the ones I made that came in super handy is this little uh, cutter that I made, kind of a uh, uh, adjustable bore cutter. And it just has a high speed steel drill bit shank that I sharpened to a geometry that would work, and then a cross drilled little set screw in the back and that lets me adjust the diameter of a hole and I use it to clean up and just take a few thou off a hole that was CNC cut and that it wasn't wasn't perfectly round and I required it to be you know dead on so it worked perfectly for that purpose and it was actually a pretty quick build. I'll show you another thing I built with it. This is still a work in progress but this is actually a project for a friend and I needed to CNC mill a big piece of brass um, very precisely to a very, um, uh, like all across his length, so any kind of deviation, a few thou here and there, you end up with deeper, deeper engravings, and if they're fine cuts, it kind of looks silly. So I made this, it's a big aluminum plate, and then on the back I just put a steel block that I tapped in there, and this uh, clamps into my little uh, precision vise, which then clamps to the CNC bed, and then on top there's a piece of brass you can see, and then I just have these little machinist clamps holding it on right now. Um, what I'll probably end up doing during milling is I will uh, use cyanoacrylate and bond this whole plate on so we don't get any warp when it starts to stress relief from cutting because there'll be pocketing and stuff in it as well. And um, that'll let me use a perfectly trued surface. I'll use a CNC to true it before I put the plate onto it. And it'll let me cut it and, and do all my, all my work while still changing the clamping around because I'll have to do edge cutting as well. So uh, just a fixture, but it's... Uh, it should work well and I'll be able to use it in the future for some other projects that are coming up. Anyways, that's all for now. That's my shop. Quick run through. If you got any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to get to what I can. And uh, once again, thanks for all your support guys. Thanks for subscribing. Till next time.